all in all a pretty good trip, I would say. We arrived near Turkey Point Nuclear Power Plant, just to the west of us, with its striking cooling channels visible from space on Google Maps, and a name that may come from the snake birds that we've been observing all throughout our trip up the coast. The Turkey Point Nuclear Power Plant, of course, powers the metropolis ahead of us. I was surprised to read on Wikipedia that Miami has only the third largest skyline in the United States. That means approximately 300 immense high-rises in view. It smells like sunshine. It smells like sunshine. But I would see, would see, would see. We're heading to the city whether it wants us or not. It was a busy day out on the water because the sailing had become very good that afternoon. At 78 feet, this bridge did not appear to have almost 20 feet for us to spare in between the top of our mast and the concrete. Why do they always look like it's not the height of the I know. Ooh, it doesn't oh. look like 20 feet in between. It does not look like it. Fucking <laughs> weird. I don't want to even see what the 56 one which we have to pass. No. Gonna give me I don't want that one. I don't want to do it. Miami! Woo! What a mess! We headed towards what we call the Stadium Anchorage. Located at Virginia Key, the stadium was built for power boat racing and water sports. It was designed by a Cuban architect and it cost the equivalent of almost $20 million in today's dollars to build in the 1960s, and a speedboater was killed the opening day. The structure was abandoned in 1992 because it was deemed unsafe after Hurricane Andrew, and today the basin is actively used by the local rowing team and, of course, boaters. As many who are watching already know, it is difficult to access land for the necessities of life here in Miami. This is the spot that we knew that we'd be able to anchor our dinghy just off the shore and come to land to bike to town. The view of the downtown core from this anchorage certainly cannot be beat. Miami was all I was forecasted to be overwhelming and welcoming <laughs> and Beautiful skyline, I guess, and very busy. It looks like a giant ant's nest. There's planes flying, and there's boats rowing, and there's cops flying by. And it's one of those places where, I, where it is exactly how I imagined it. You know, when you mm. go to a place and it's like completely where you don't imagine it. No, Miami was exactly the way I imagined it. <laughs> All uh, we were missing was the. Ah! Dun, dun, dun. Our friend and supporter of this channel arrived to help us to navigate our stay here in the city. All the Teslas sitting there charging. We drove up the highway with him to Fort Lauderdale, where apparently can be found the largest West Marine in existence. But we were here for the used marine supply store, Sailor Man. Oh my goodness. It was just shelves and shelves of used sailboat materials. We'd like to give a shout out to the folks at Sailor Man for their help and reasonable prices on some of the bare necessities that we've been lacking. It's very rare to find a single uh, piece of wood or these are like... And then our friend helped us to search for a boatyard where they might be able to haul us out. But everything seemed pretty full. From the stadium, it's a decent bicycle ride over the bridge towards the downtown core to the grocery store. Check out my new wheels.
The anchorage is well protected from northerly, southerly, and easterly winds. So it's a favorite of charter and party boats. At first, we were not sure where we were going to find water, but after calling several nearby marinas, we found that it could be taken at Crandon Park Marina fuel dock. We're in search of water. Our friend had also brought us a nifty little doodad for siphoning water and fuel. Siphon me. Instead of blowing. Instead of blowing. I don't blow a suck no more. And very importantly, we also got our flag, which represents my home and native land. I guess we'll do diesel first. Jug out, we put the 10 15 bucks of diesel in. Filling up on water. We filled our tank almost completely in five minutes, so. See a special here. We decided to change up our anchorage and change up the spectacular views. This is this is the house that was used in the shot. That is Frank's house. Mm. Welcome to the limit. Eventually, it was time to move on, to look for a place to haul out. to try some newfangled cosmic crisp apples. They are crunchier and sweeter than most apples that I have tasted in the last 10 years. Rounding the corner before the exit, we motored straight into the wind. Past the totally full no-name harbor and houses on stilts. Stiltsville was built in the early 1920s and 30s, one mile offshore where gambling was legal. At its peak, it consisted of nearly 27 buildings and attracted boaters, party goers, and bikini clad girls. A lot of damage was wrought by hurricanes through the 50s and 60s. The surviving houses are on the register of national historic places. After passing the markers, we were finally into deep enough water to turn northward and to raise the jib again. We temporarily exited the ICW, and now we're finally in the famous Gulf Stream current, rocketing us northward with very little effort on our part. Despite sailing on a beam and broad reach, the course was feeling rather uncomfortable. Uh, lids are already lids starting. Flying. Here's a first for our trip. A cooler full of drinks. Usually it's just water and tea. Another lumpy day. Oh, lumpy lumpy, it's okay, it's not so bad. The sea's a little mixed here right now. A little confused, but I think it's because we are in the current. I wouldn't want to be coming down against this right now. This current. Maybe we have to be really close to shore. Maybe we're gonna pass all over us. So.
What's really interesting is that the, the, the cloudy nest seems to come from the sea and it only gets thicker and rainy as soon as it gets to shore. I haven't seen any of the rain. What are the conditions? We're from behind and we're from the side. I lay on the cabin sole for a while to remedy my unsettled stomach. Now I understand why the Americans built the ICW. Classic Atlantic swell that comes in. Light winds from the south. I can see this being the predominant conditions around here. Southeasterly winds with an easterly swell. Yeesh! Like that. We'll just get a million slaves to dig for a hundred years. So just a little historical note here, the ICW is a roughly 3,000 mile long waterway with natural sections combined with artificially dug out and deepened areas along the east coast of the United States. As early as the 1600s, there was an idea to create a consistent waterway. Construction pretty much began with British colonialists having enslaved people dig out cuts between natural river portions. However, by the time that the project was officially completed in 1949, it was the Army Corps of Engineers who were federally mandated to maintain the canals at a depth of about 12 feet. As we approach Mar-a-Lago, it's getting smooth. No? Sleazy smooth. It's getting sleazy. <laughs> it's getting... Oily. It's getting oily smooth. And then we got a call on the radio from a nearby Coast Guard vessel. Again, we're coming up on Mar-a-Lago here, maybe in about 10 miles. We're pretty close to the coastline to just, we wanted some relief from the waves we were having and taking the waves from this angle was, was good. We were able to cook. Then the Coast Guard passed us, passed in front of us, came up from behind us and then passed in front of us. And we thought they had kicked up some bubbles or something in the water. Right over where they passed, in front of us, to the starboard side of us, we saw something weird that may have been like a submerged vessel. It was, or just a something the size of a vessel, shallow under the water. And we thought that was bubbles that they kicked up. But then they hailed us a, a moment ago and asked for that position. Did we see something? Did we hear something on the radio? We didn't hear any calls on the radio, but we, other than them hailing us, I hope that they, they find what they're looking for. It was a weird thing that we saw in the water. Anyways, they just passed back behind us and, and I can see they're very small in the distance. They zoomed back to that location and it's good we're sailing. It's, you know, not the loud sound of the, the motor. If, if there was anybody in distress in the yeah, water, we no would have seen jackets, them. Yeah, there was no there was nobody in the water. We there was no debris, nothing. No oil sleek, no no signs of, of... Anybody around, just just a just weird color under the water. Not too far from the coastline, you could swim it, I mean. Yeah, well. Size of the jet though. We're looking for a we're looking for a sighting. Looking for a sighting, yeah. Coast Guard, flying around this Coast Guard Tech Mine Reporter. Next Coast Guard Tech Mine Reporter out. We kept on racing into the night at almost nine knots, and lightning kept on flashing on the horizon ahead. <laughs> 